So from the home screen, we need to firstly open up the VDAS application, which we do so by double clicking the icon. Then just wait for a few moments. The first experiment we want to look at is the STS-8. So if the experiment wasn't already on that, we would go to options, select VDAS application, and then you would go look for your, for your experiment because it's not doesn't always land on the experiment that you're looking for. So because it's simulation, we are going to hit the simulation button there. Now there are five different combinations of experiments that you can select in simulation. So we're going to select the, the most complex, if you like, which is the roof truss. And there you see a legend or a, a diagram of the experiment that we're going to perform. So having selected the roof truss, and the two main parameters we're looking at are the force being applied. So I'm going to just make that a large display and the vertical load, which is the load at that point there, if you can see my mouse cursor. So we're going to maximize and show large display. So to run the experiment, we're going to apply a vertical load at that point there by increasing the load in that box there. And we're going to see a deflection, which is the overall deflection of that member strain. And then we're going to see all these calculated forces. These forces are calculated by the software. If you didn't have this software, then students will be expected to do the individual calculations of the forces in each of those members. So before we start, because we're in simulation again, we can actually change the dimensions of the members in millimeters. And we can also change the Young's modulus of the material. So if you have your own material and you know the Young's modulus, then that can be entered into that box there. But we're gonna run with the default settings today. So we start at 100 Newtons and we increment like so on. And when you're ready to take a force reading or a set of readings, you click the record data button there. Then we increase the load. And at the same time, we can see the deflection changing and we can see all these member forces changing as well. Some are positive, some are negative, and some are in equilibrium. So we'll take another reading and so on until you've got a complete set of data. When you've got your set of data, you can either observe them within VDAS by looking either at chart work or you can observe the data set or the data rows there. So you can scroll across and see all the data you've collected. And finally, if you hit the Excel button, we can save, go for a destination, click save, and your data will appear in a few moments in an Excel spreadsheet, which you can see there. So all these columns here show the forces in those members. And the same experiment can be done for different patterns of members. So we have a simple cantilever or a diving board in the real world. We have a Warren girder. Again, these mimic diagrams are showing or, or flashing up on the right hand side. The roof truss, which we've already seen. And then finally, a roof truss with a side loading. So you'll see there's a, a, a load cell at the bottom pulling down, but also is a load cell on the side. So that could be simulating some high winds hitting into the side of a building or a roof truss in this case. Okay, so this 
object of this next little clip is to show how we can get some live data exported into a graph as we actually conduct a simulation experiment. So let's start by firing up VDAS. So I would like for this particular experiment to select a roof truss and we can see the roof truss there has been uh, displayed in a, a little mimic diagram to help the students understand the arrangement and the configuration. So we're going to be applying a downward force on the roof truss and because I want to show a live output and build a graph I'm going to measure force against the forces that exist in one of these members. So first of all let's work about building that graph. So a typical graph has axes. So the x-axis or the horizontal axis we are going to assign a field and I want to measure the force on the x-axis and now I want to actually look at the forces that exist in one of these members so I'm going to select member B E so using Bose notation this this arrangement is is cleverly identified by a series of letters and BE just happens to be that vertical member there and hopefully you can see my cursor showing member BE. So we select BE on the y-axis of VDAS. We can change the color of the data sets, we can change the, 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 the shape of the um, data set and we can actually change the size of it. We'll leave it as default for the time being. Now we can minimize that now because what I want to do now is to do a timed recording. Um, this, is, this is best served if you're working alone on the software or if you're a lecturer and you have a classroom and displaying this on a, on a projector. It makes the task of data collection a lot easier. So we click the clock face and we will want to record every half a second. Okay. So, having selected simulation on the software, the chart's ready. We can just go back to the chart. We can minimize that. So the moment I, I press the play button on the time to capture window, it's going to wait for me to to press uh, the play, which is going to capture every every half a second. So we have a roof truss selected. We're going to measure force against deflection on one of these uh, member forces, and we're going to capture the force in that member. So I'm going to press play now. It's now waiting for me to capture some data. So at 100 newtons, I'm going to press record. Then I'm going to increase or increment that force reading. Press record. Now we can record this all the way up to 500 newtons. And again. Now it is possible to populate this graph with more data than I'm just doing now. But for this example, I'm just showing you how simple it is to do. So we'll, we'll stop the time capture now. We can close that down. We can then go to our graph. And as you would hope and expect, we can see a perfect straight line linear graph of the load being applied to member BE and on vertical axis you can actually see the member itself.